Hi, today I want to show you how you can build and upload your own custom ChatGPT plugin. First, I will demonstrate to you what the plugin is capable of and then the steps you need to follow to build your own plugin. You will also find the code in the description, which allows you to build your own plugin very easily. To be able to use plugins in ChatGPT, you have to be a ChatGPT Plus user currently. If you don't see plugins here, maybe you can activate them via settings and then go to beta features and then toggle on this plug-in button. Um, if that does not work, maybe you don't have this option yet and you have to wait a few days or maybe even weeks. I don't know the scheduling of OpenAI there. What I built is a simple CRUD application and this application allows you to add books to a list and you can rate the books, you can update the ratings of the books and you can delete the books. So it's a very simple CRUD application. It's run via fast API and so if you want to say uh, add, for example, add atomic habits to my list, five stars rating, then ChatGPT will use the plugin and make a post request to the endpoint here and add a book to the list. And I can later use, update uh, and delete the books from the list. You have just um, wait a little bit and then ChatGPT should handle it via plugin. So ChatGPT tells me now I've added atomic habits to your book list with a five star rating. And now I can prompt here, show me my book list. And this will make a, a get request to the endpoint. And normally I should see atomic habits with the five star rating here now. Okay, now it looks better. And you can see when you click here, you can see the username it was used the title and the review and this um, request body was used to make a post request to the endpoint here, to the post endpoint and uh, a book was added with my username user. So this is what we're gonna build and I will show you what files you need and what code you need. I will not code along with you, I will just show you the files and how it works and how you can set up this on your own. Okay, I'm currently in VS Code now, and now I will guide you through the code. I have an app.py, which includes the API code. I will show you how it's done. So I use Fast API for my service. You can use some other web service like Flask or Django, of course, too. But it has to be a web service since you have to make requests um, from localhost, in this case, to uh, ChatGPT. And here are the libraries I used, for example, Fast API and Pydentic. And then I created an app instance and an empty dictionary, which is my so-called in-memory database. You can also, of course, uh, add a real database to this, but it's a very simple example. So then something you have to definitely do is allow origins. And this can be done with course middleware. So you have to add course to the service. Otherwise, you cannot speak from ChatGPT to localhost. So this has to be definitely done. And then I created a book model that's just for my endpoint. And then I created a post endpoint to create a book and add it in this list of books. Then another get endpoint to get my books, a delete endpoint to delete a book with a ID from my book list, and also the option to add, uh, to update a book, for example, the title or the rating. And then this is the so-called business logic and the plugin also expects a logo. This is the logo which is displayed in the plugin store. And it also expects an AI plugin.json file. And this is stored in the AI plugin.json file in the dot well known directory. And this gets also exposed via API. And a third file is the openapi.yaml. In the openapi.yaml, this file explains your endpoints in um, a specific YAML file. And as you can see, here is my path, for example, and the operation ID, parameters I use, and description for the response, and so on. So this file is needed. And for every endpoint, you have to describe it in this file and have to describe your items. For example, this is my book item, which directly corresponds to this. And yeah, that just explains the endpoint. And a very important file is like I already said, this AI plugin.json file. 
And here you have the name for a human. And this name for human is the is the text which gets displayed in the App Store and the name for the model. So this is what the user sees and this is what ChatGPT will see. And there is also a description for human. This is what a user can read about my file. And this is, I think it's more important, this is um, what ChatGPT expects. Normally ChatGPT is pretty good at interpreting these descriptions, uh, at least in my experience and it works pretty nice. If I tell it, um, this is a plugin for managing books and I mention books in my prompt, it, it's very likely that it's used correctly. So what else do I need? I need the API type and I also need the URL, which uh, hosts this service. And in this case, it's run on localhost and the port 4444. And there is my YAML file. And this YAML file is also read by ChatGPT to get the endpoints, for example, it, it has to know uh, which endpoint to use, for example, to add a book. It needs the post endpoint and there is also a summary what it can be done with it. And so this has to be also in this um, API URL. Another important piece of information is the logo URL. And this is on logo.png, also exposed via the API, as you can see here. And this is the file name and this is the endpoint. So this gets displayed in the store correctly. Contact email and legal info URL are currently not important. This is only important if you want to host the plugin on your own website and want to verify it um, or want to let it verify by OpenAI. To summarize it, you have three very important files, the openrp.yaml file and the logo.png. And these have to be exposed via the API. And then you have your business logic, which yeah, does the stuff what you want to implement in your, in your API. But without these endpoints and without these files, you will not have a complete plugin and it won't get verified. So if everything is set up correctly, you can now go to a new chat and go here and then to plugin store. And then you go to develop your own plugin and here you have to expose your domain. Currently it's running on localhost, but to be honest, the server is not running. I have to do it. And this is currently done with Ubicorn. I run Ubicorn app, app and then run it on port 444. And this is also the port which is used in the AI plugin.json. These ports have to match, otherwise it will not be identified correctly. And then you go to here and just write localhost and the port. And now ChatGPT tries to find the manifest file. And as you can see, everything is set up correctly. The manifest file is verified and the open RP spec is also correctly. If everything is okay here, I now can click on install localhost plugin. And now I can just turn it on and off. And well, now you are ready to use your own ChatGPT plugin. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumb up. Thank you very much. Bye bye.